Hey guys, remember me? It's uh, it's been a while, but I am finally back. Um, to everyone who was enjoying the series, um, I, I'm sorry I kind of disappeared for a while there. I I got overwhelmed. I got um, I don't want to say burned out. I just kind of got out of the habit of making the films. Uh, you go out to do something, and it takes twice as long sometimes just to do it when you're trying to record everything and um, I've been home with the kids a lot more and kind of while I was adjusting to that it, it got easier to not make the videos every time when I went outside and so I guess I, I just I got lazy I got out of the habit um, but it's it's been about two months now and I I'm used to it. I've gotten used to, to taking care of the kids. I um, I really love being a stay-at-home dad. It's been a lot of fun. They don't. Um, it, you miss a lot when you're not with them all the time. You miss the their learning process and and when they're trying new things and all this the the things that come along with being with them all the time. And so it's it's been it's been really great. Um, but. A lot of you messaged me asking, you know, what what happened to the series. You know, we were really enjoying it and all that. Um, thank you, number one, for enjoying the series, and thanks for reaching out. Uh, a lot of you were just interested to make sure, you know, everything was okay, make sure nothing happened, and uh, I really appreciate all of you doing that. Um, so I'm here today to uh, restart the series again and kind of make a little bit of a change to it. So initially, my idea was that I would I would come out every day and I'd make a video of something awesome getting done something big you know like uh, finishing a chicken coop or redoing a fence line and all these big things and the, my reason for that is I, I wanted something exciting to show you I wanted something engaging and I wanted you to see something in action something happening and for a while that worked great but then I kind of realized that I, I don't have, I don't have something I could do every day that's big, and so I've been thinking of what I can do instead. And and so there are a lot of things that I don't know. There are a lot of things that I'm still learning. And so what I'm going to do for for my own benefit and also for your benefit is I'm going to do something every day that pushes me in the right direction towards towards more permaculture in the in my life, towards more community, um, towards um, taking better care of my kids, being a better father, being a better husband, whatever it is, it's something that makes me better, it makes this property better, it makes my relationship better. And so it's not necessarily going to be, here's how you plant comfrey every time, although I'm, I do want to show you guys some comfrey in a little while, but it's just going to be me learning, me um, just trying to make myself better, to improve myself, to learn new skills. And... Hopefully, uh, you guys can learn something along the way too, but it's going to keep me motivated. It's going to keep me doing something every day, and it doesn't have to be huge. Um, you know, there's a lot about herbs that I want to learn that I don't know about. That uh, There's a lot about preserving uh, food, whether that's making jelly or drying out herbs or growing my own mushrooms. There's so many things that I want to try, and I'm going to bring you along with me. Um, so it's not going to be... A lot of big projects. It's going to be a lot of small stuff. Uh, I, I want to stick to the once a day schedule. I really do. Um, I'm not quite sure how feasible that is, how easy that'll be to do, but I'm going to try. Um, but the, the big thing I want to do today is take you on a small tour of all the things that I got done while I wasn't filming, just so you can get caught up, and then we can start again fresh in the next video and everybody will be on the same page. Whether whether you followed the, the first videos or whether this is the first one you see, you'll know what's going on. And so you, you can tell the, the scenery has, has changed considerably since my last video. Um, it, we're now well into fall, <laughs> obviously. But the, uh, the first project I wanted to show you guys was what my wife has called the gamper. Um, that is a combination of camper and goat. <laughs> so this is the goat camper. And it's a really old trailer that we used for a while as a chicken coop. Uh, it was a mobile chicken coop. And what we've done now is my wife 
pressure washed it and beautified it and I uh, added some some metal to the side and um, on the inside well it's also a, a pig camper actually I had no idea he could get in here hi Albie hi buddy um, so don't don't mind us bud okay we're just gonna be here for a minute um, this is actually part of an old futon that we did that made a hay rack out of it um, we still got some Christmas lights in here so we can run uh, power here and put the lights on if we need to for some reason and we just threw a bunch of hay in and it's got a rubberized bottom um, to stop the uh, the goat pee and the goat poop from eating through the bottom of the wood on the trailer and then we got a nice little brush right here for them because they like to rub their necks and their heads on the brush and this is just a nice little mobile hi guys this is just a nice mobile um, shelter for the goats where we can we can put them wherever we want and what's great is you saw the the hay in there with um, you know all the the great manure and the the goat pee um, and I've got a lot of bare dirt around here so it's it's gonna be a good thing that we can camp somewhere or park somewhere and um, you know turns out fertilized hay is actually pretty good for bare dirt and getting things growing again and, and stabilizing the soil because I've got probably six inches of soil that's fallen down and got caught on the fence line over there that's just eroded from this pasture here. Um, for a long time this was a dry lot with some miniature horses on it. They actually couldn't go out on grass for more than a couple hours at a time. Uh, their feet would have found her. They, they'd get really sore feet and they'd be in trouble. And so this kind of got turned into dirt. And now I'm trying to cover it up. And you'll remember I moved a bunch of round bales into here uh, with the tractor when we first got the tractor. And all these round bales have been smashed down pretty well by the goats. And they're actually already starting to grow. So <laughs> the seeds the seeds are germinating uh, in the piles here as, as, uh, as they're just kind of getting knocked down. I just wanted some ground cover just so that it wasn't bare dirt anymore. Um, but it's actually starting order to, to, to grow a little bit, so I don't know what we'll get out of that. It's mostly just weeds. There's some nice mushrooms there, but um, they did a great job. Uh, all they did is I, I parked them in here, and the goats just started knocking them down. And this was all just dirt. So this has already made a big improvement into stopping the erosion. Um, I've got some plans. Um, that's another uh, project I'm starting is there's... I took a, I took my PDC with Perma Ethos. I started it two years ago. Finally finished all the, uh, all the videos on the online course, and so now I'm working on my final design. And initially, I was afraid. They always tell you don't do your own property first, but I've been living here for five years, thinking about it for so long that I know what I want to do. Since I have a pretty good idea of what I'd like to do, it's it's time to put it all to paper and I realized really quickly that I don't have any idea how to get the process started of mapping out my property for, with an aerial view, drawing the contour lines, um, adding in the swales after I've mapped them out. Um, I, I don't have any idea how to do any of that sort of thing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to record it and um, the nice thing about that is recording software on my computer doesn't really take any extra effort. Um, I'll probably just end up talking to my computer screen, but honestly I do that anyway while I'm working, so it won't really be that different. Um, so it's, uh, oh, while we're here, um, in one of the videos I was out here with Clara uh, when we took those comfrey cuttings, and um, let me see if I can find them. There's a few of them here along the drive. Oh, here's one. Um, we just planted some, some root cuttings. They were only about that long. Uh, just buried them right beneath the surface. Um, I did not water these at all. I didn't baby these at all. I didn't do anything to them. And here they are coming up. And this is going to be great forage for when the goats and the sheep are in here. And it's also going to be a nice source of comfrey that's nearby the house. Um, there's even one in the dirt over there along the fence line, but I'll, I won't walk all the way back over there. But um, a lot of the comfrey just came right up. I didn't do anything. So here's another one right here. And I planted a bunch along the fence line in the in the garden space too. Um, that all grew up and got real big. Which I'm going in there next so we can I'll take you on the tour of those. But the uh, 
So yeah, the, the PDC design, that's going to be another big one that I want to do. So that'll kind of be a, another series inside this one. Um, you can see here I finished up the wood chips on the garden. And uh, comfrey came right in. Um, trees are getting kind of... Starting to lose their leaves. <clears throat> Some of my jujubes there. Um, and one of the other things... I did just one day just for fun. It's not it's not really a permaculture thing. I just put a little fire pit here. Um, and then this is uh, this is the well was was the aviary. Um, it's uh, we still don't know what happened, um, but we came out. I came out one day and. All four of our uh, all four of our parrots were in the corner um, dead, and uh, we um, we took them to the local uh, vet school and uh, got them got them necropsy to see if we could figure out what happened. And uh, they they have no idea, um, so we 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 don't know what happened. There there has to be something in there that. Either we thought it was galvanized metal and it wasn't, and or or maybe something had lead in it and we just didn't know. Um, some something happened, um, and so we we lost four of our five parrots um, overnight, basically. So um, I, I don't really know what we're gonna do with this. Um, I, I don't think we're gonna get more parrots. Um, we still have Ruby, who's our inside bird, but uh, um, so we've we've got this this space out here that I um, I really don't know what we're gonna do. I, I can show it to you um, just so you see it, but it's um, so we've got all of our dogwood perches and we've got some grapevines in here, and uh, so I I don't know I've um, I haven't even been out here to, to clean it up since they died, so it's it's still just like it was. Um, so I I don't know. This didn't really have a, a permaculture application in any way. It was more of just a doing it for my wife. But there's so my plan was you know this makes a pretty good space out here for you know the sun the sun comes up over here and kind of goes this way through the sky. So this I thought. Perhaps this would be a good wall to to do something on, you know, grow things up that the birds might be able to pick at it. But you know, so what? They eat a few beans. It's not a big deal. So um, I don't know. The only thing I can think to do with this now is um, maybe some sort of nursery. Uh, the the roof is is plastic. It does let some some light through, but it blocks a lot of it. It does keep it kind of warm in there. Um, so I honestly don't know. I, I don't know. If you have any ideas, you can let me know. But I, I don't know. Maybe something, something to get things potted up in in the in the spring, or maybe I can put in an automated misting system in here for tree cuttings or, or something. I, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it honestly. So that's that's that update. Um, another well, I guess another bit of sad sad news is. Um, Gigi, who was uh, one of our models when we were showing you how to put rumen fluid in a goat, um, we had to put her down um, just recently too. Uh, she was my best milker, um, but she just she never really got over anything. She got she got sick. She always carried a really heavy worm load. Um, sometimes goats just are more susceptible to that. Um, I I don't know why, but she was uh, she was a really heavy shedder, um, so she kind of made everyone around her sick as well. And she just she never really got all the way better um, whenever she got sick. And so eventually she just got worn out, and she she dropped so much weight over like two days, and it got really cold at the same time. And so she had a little and built a little fort out of hay bales around her, gave her a heat lamp and everything. It was just. Um, and, but so she made it through all that, but it just it took it took a big toll on her, and she just wasn't recovering. So 
we just had to put her down. And so it's been, there's been some hard stuff. Um, that's, I guess those are the, the big, the big updates. Um, oh, I, I can show you the, uh, the cuttings real quick. I can tell you right now that, um, everything died except for the gojis, which did really well. Um, and then one of the blackberries did okay too. I can't remember off the top of my head, which is, you know, what treatment they got, but so I'll be doing an update on these as well. Um, Part of the problem is they were left outside for a long time through freezes and stuff, and so I didn't I didn't baby them as well as I should have, and so the results are probably not that representative of what I would actually get if I were more careful with them. Um, but I I just honestly I forgot about them at one point, and they may have gone without water for too long, and then it got cold, and I didn't bring them inside, and uh, most of them froze. But that goji is still doing really well, so. Um, results are probably going to be inconclusive, but I can tell you the goji replicates really easily. So there's that at least. Um, so those, those are the big updates. Uh, I, I've got an ongoing relationship with a local tree company now where I just get tons of wood chips, which is nice. So I've been spreading those around everywhere. Um, all of it's covered in leaves right now, so I can't really show you much. But um, I guess... But that's probably all for now. I, I don't really have any other huge projects that I finished while you were gone. Um, I can show you that we have a really big burn pile that we're going to be burning soon, right here. So that'll be fun. Hi goats. Hi sheep. Hi guys. There's Briar. He's getting big. Say hi Briar. Look how big he is. There's Nettle. She's big too. Those are our dorpers. There's Monty. He's one of our young bucks. Um, so probably my next big project that I'll try to do uh, next week. Um, I'm going out of town this weekend, but um, we've got kind of a a dry. I don't know if you want to call it a dry lot. It's a sacrificial lot over here underneath this tree, and uh, that's one of the spots that we can rotate the chickens through. And it's already basically dirt. Um, it was already dirt because. The sun does not come back here. Uh, we've got a massive oak tree, and this whole section is basically directly under the oak tree. And so you can see here the vegetation is basically zero. So um, I've got tons of wood chips, and this looks like a really good place to dump a bunch of wood chips and put the chickens on it for the winter. So they're going to have their run inside there, heavily, heavily, heavily wood chipped. And oh, did you escape? You may have escaped. No, no, that door is still open for some reason. Okay. Never mind. And so, uh, lots of wood chips in here. Lots of wood chips around the coop. And that'll be where we keep them for the winter so these fields don't get turned into dirt. Um, because there's really nothing for them to eat right now. Except for... Uh, what's left of the bug population. But we've, we've had a couple frosts, so it's probably nothing anymore anyway. So, that is... Probably enough for one video. I uh, thank you again to all of you who were ch who checked up on me while I was gone. I really appreciate that. It, it was it was really nice to know that I was um, entertaining you, uh, maybe teaching you a couple things here and there, which is it, still kind of funny because I feel like I don't know <laughs> much at all. So to to hear people saying I taught them something is is kind of kind of weird, but also really nice. I, I like it. I I, uh, I I appreciate all of you doing. Uh, I appreciate all of you. Thank you. So, I, I'm going to go for now, but I'm going to see you guys back here tomorrow, and we'll figure out what we're going to do. I'm not quite sure yet, but it's going to be great. So, I'll see you tomorrow.